burned. Sure. So you're not going to be doing anything too insane as far as like any expectation, just play as you normally would. And I'm just going to be watching and not going to be talking too much. Uh, I just want to see what we're what we're working with off the rip, and then we'll get into some information after that. Gotcha. Right, let's do it. Back to the depth. So right away, I'm going to be paying attention to see how he likes to approach. The first thing I saw was the rising there, but I couldn't be too sure if that was going to be something that was recurring. But this jump from ledge happening twice, I'm definitely taking a note of that. I'm also paying attention that he did a get-up attack after not making it back after two jump attempts, and then approaching on the ground, approaching in the air, and then approaching on the ground twice more, I'm going to try and get a landing aerial over the top. I'll admit this roll read was a complete guess, but I wanted to see if I can catch him slipping. Here we have another neutral get up into shield and another landing nair. You'll notice that there's a couple patterns with how he likes to try and land and get in with those landing aerials, specifically nair and sometimes back air. Here I've caught on to the fact that he's now rolled in for a second time. The first one was a guess, but the second one was most definitely a read. Once again, getting up into the corner with now a neutral get up into shield. I look for the roll in right here with that dare, but he does not roll in that time. Instead, we now get him back into the corner and I expect yet another roll in and get the down tilt for the kill. At this point, I know that he has a landing aerial habit, a rolling in habit, jumping from ledge, and if the jump from ledge happens to fail, he's either going to go for a neutral getup or getup attack. Right here, I stood backwards to try and threaten for another roll in read, but he decided to roll into the corner. Right here, you'll notice that I hang on the ledge for a very long time to see if he'll pressure me to get off the ledge. Up here, you're going to notice a dash away that actually catches me slipping, and I completely miss this grab. This is one of the better interactions that was on his part, but I would like to see a stronger punish. At this point I have a pretty comfortable lead so I'm just trying to jump around and see how they interact and try to approach. One of the most important parts to me when testing out a player during coaching is to see how they'll interact with me whether or not I approach or don't approach. A lot of the time I'll find players who have absolutely no problem scrapping it out as long as I am constantly initiating every interaction but as soon as I step away from them it kind of gets awkward. I also want to point out, and I think it's very important that you guys know, that when I am testing somebody out during a coaching session, I'm absolutely not trying to win. I'm trying to test out every single aspect of the game, or as much as I possibly can, so that right after the match, we have something to talk about, and I'm able to give them as much information and as much value as quick as possible. We have another attempt here of him trying to ledge trap me, but this time I quickly get up, because last time I hung on the ledge, he eventually learned that he should try and down tilt. This time, I stuffed it out quite quickly and got back into neutral. Once again, slowing down the game and trying to keep my distance as much as I can to see how he'll initiate and see if he can get a kill. Right here, since we both got up onto the ledge very quickly, I held shield and got a grab, just in case he happened to go for a get-up attack or nair from the ledge. I also threw out a couple pummels during that grab to see if he would start mashing and potentially have bad or no DI. I did happen to catch him mashing and I took the stock. You'll notice right here that I start to play very hyper-aggressive to see if he can catch me making a mistake. Of course it would have felt very massy at this point for him to try and just throw out anything to get a kill, but honestly, since I have such a huge lead, I kind of wanted him to just try and get me out of here. Eventually landing a stray back air and taking the stock, but what I learned during that short interaction is the fact that he was respecting me way too much. I shouldn't be able to be running him over quite as easily as I was, especially at such a high percent, and him on a fresh stock. Speaking of too much respect, if you'll notice he actually gimped himself right here, and so I decided to save him. He just floated around a little too long. It's okay though. Yeah. Alrighty. So, uh, a lot of things on the ledge. You just have a, a very, very linear um, rotation off the ledge, if that makes sense. So, if you know what I mean by that, kind of. Like, at first you were jumping from ledge, and that's totally fine. And then from there, uh, you were kind of just transitioning through the through the, uh, the phases, I guess. So I want to talk about getting off the ledge a little bit, and then we're also going to talk about neutral. Okay? So, yeah, getting off the ledge, uh, let's start with that first. So when I was catching you off the ledge, the first thing that you were doing is you were jumping, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was yeah. trying to control you by standing in a certain spot to make you do the other option that makes sense to do. So first things first, if you're at the ledge and you jump from ledge and I catch you, it's like, okay, well, that wasn't fun. So now from there, if I stand right here, you start to do a lot of neutral getup, which makes sense. I'm standing back. So you're not going to roll into me if I'm right here, right? After the neutral getups were happening, I was starting to play up here and now you've failed uh, at the jumps and I'm catching your, uh, your neutral getups. So now obviously you're going to start rolling, right? And I caught a couple of those as well. So I don't think you throw any getup attacks. Also no nair from ledge. Fair from ledge is a little bit crazy. If it works, sure, but only really throw that out if I am uh, playing up this close, right? Also, mm -hmm. if I am playing up this close too, you don't want to be abandoning your jump from ledge, 
The only way I would abandon jump from ledge is if I'm doing this over the top of the ledge. So if you happen to jump at the wrong <clears throat> wrong time, you get spiked immediately, right? And that, that would be a bad time. So um, also take your time on the ledge. I want to point out too, that if you happen to lose your intangibility, you're not going to get hit immediately, right? If anything, it's actually a downfall for a lot of players who do get up the second that their intangibility runs out. So as soon as it runs out, just do something, right? Uh -huh. If I can catch on to that and say, okay, he's probably going to get up right there. I can start to time my option with your option. It's a little bit of rock, paper, scissors. I don't know exactly what you're going to do, but I can kind of make a guess based on where I'm, uh, where I'm standing to say, okay, if I'm standing right here, for example, uh, good chance to get a neutral get up into shield. Right. If jump hasn't worked, neutral get up into shield probably going to happen next. The reason why I know that is because get up attack from this range. You obviously can't hit me. Rolling into this right. would be horrific if you'd like rolled into a down smash, F smash, grab, down tilt, up tilt, whatever. That's all bad. Uh, fair from ledge, nair from ledge aren't going to hit me. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you do a neutral get up into shield, uh, you're going to get grabbed quite a bit at the very least. Right. But there are some other mix ups that you can still be throwing out from the ledge. I don't think you did a single falcon kick from the ledge. I don't think you ever did a neutral get up into jab as well. Neutral get up into jab is not amazing, but just throwing it out just to have that hitbox uh, active. So if I do run in and go for a grab, I'm, I'm going to get hit, right? Yeah. If you're in the corner, you're not necessarily trying to get a combo or reverse me or anything, really. You're just trying to stay alive, right? You're trying to get back on stage and just be able to continue playing. So if you just throw out a jab, it's like, okay, well, let's say you have me at zero. You don't want to jab because you're going to mess up your combo potential out of like a down throw or something like that. If you throw out that jab and just get me off of you, you get to see another day, basically. Right? Yeah. Uh, you'll notice too, or hopefully you notice that when I was fighting you, I didn't fish for any particular thing to get combos going. I Instead, I just said, okay, whatever he's going to do, I'm just going to punish that. And if it works for me, then that's what I'm going to continue to do. I didn't get, really get to do any super special combos of my own. I kind of just did what worked and what was available to me. So yeah. I, I'm not sure if you were trying to fish for something too specific. I saw, like I said, a lot of landing nares. I think you're trying to get like nair one, uh, something like that. Trying to get some nair one combos started of some sort. Um, if that was the case, yeah. uh, that's totally fine. If you can nail it, then sure. But if you're getting stuffed out by it, uh, let's, let's say if you're getting stuffed out by me doing up tilts and running in with uh rising fair rising nair rising back air having you land on my shield getting grabs and stuff like that then two things you could be doing instead right so i know we're, we're transitioning a little bit of, away from getting off the ledge and more so into how i was right. getting you onto the ledge in the first place okay uh -huh. so with the nairs that you're coming in with you're doing stuff like this right trying to get a nair i think it was nair one to either pop me up and get like up bears and trying to do this kind of a thing into like a fair i'm not sure if that's exactly what you were going for but that's potential so with landing any landing aerials when you're throwing out something landing it's going to lose to something rising so what i mean by that is a landing nair like this is going to lose to a rising nair the reason why is because my my hitbox is immediately active or as active as as soon as possible i should say right uh -huh. so if you're doing like let's say shore hop up and then you're like at the apex of your jump still not throwing anything out and then coming down with a nair that entire time you're basically just doing an empty hop right right so if you're doing an empty hop like that i can catch you very easily and almost kind of lame by just doing like fair and i don't really get much off of that as far as a combo but what i do get is to stop you from doing what you want to do right right so if you see me coming with like fairs like this for example if you want to you can start dashing back and coming with side b's which you were doing right it might feel a little bit unga bunga but you could be up smashing me as well i know you don't get combos off of that but if i'm going to just jump at you like this free up smash all day yeah. right free damage sure. uh you could be doing rising nares as well right rising fair even because uh let's say i know it's it's not a combo and it's not desired but you kind of want to try and slow me down right it'd be the same okay. thing for me at just to like flip it around for a second it'd be the same thing for me if i was just running in and going like this and just trying to get a grab the entire time uh -huh. and all you did was this falcon kick or f smash or side b i will never ever get this grab right right it's just not going to happen so i have to play around what you want to do and try and stop you it's kind of like arm wrestling where if i'm just straight up stronger than you then sure i can just win but if you're stronger than me i have to use different techniques i have to use some technique or start using my my body weight to say okay i'm not actually stronger but there are ways for me to still win i have to t like slowly slowly muscle you into playing the way that i want you to play 
Make sense? Right. So notice how how comfortable I am when you're in the corner. One of the reasons why is because you're not throwing out any burst options from the corner as far as Falcon Kick or Raptor Boost, right? Even if you just throw them out, like for example, let's just let's just stop for one second here. So come back to the corner. Yeah. So when you're here, you'll notice I walked up to you like this. I went like that and then down tilted. If I'm as confident as I am or as I feel as safe as I do to not shield, not jump, and not give you space, that means that you're not using burst options and you're not commanding respect from the corner, right? Because mm -hmm. if I, let's say if you just get up and I'm just doing this, I'm just walking and I'm expecting you to like, I don't know, jump, right? I'm expecting you to like jump or like try and get away from me or like try and walk up and jab or something like that. And I know we talked about jab, but that's more so if I run in like this to try and get a grab, right? If I do that, jab can work, right. right? Falcon kick can also work in that situation as well, right? But if I'm right here, if I'm like, let's say just jumping like this, doing like back airs, doing up airs, nares, forward tilt, something like a, a down tilt, uh, basically just saying, I'm waiting for you to make some sort of mistake so I can capitalize. And I'm trying to keep our zones yeah. very close together like this. I'm not I'm not giving you this much space because if I'm back here, then that means clearly don't Falcon kick, right? Because yeah, I'm, right. I'm waiting for that and that's an F smash and you're probably going to die, right? But if I'm up in your face like this, Raptor boost, Falcon kick, and I, all of a sudden, when I come up to here, instead of throwing out like a down tilt or forward tilt or any attacks that I want to do, first thing I'm going to do is shield. I'm going to run up and say, okay, mm -hmm. if you Falcon kick, I'm shielding, which means you're getting past me for free, right? Yeah. Like, if I'm this close to you, I can't punish Falcon kick from here. I, I might be able to get that, but even then, like I'd have to do it immediately or like get a parry or something, right? Right. Um, if I really want to start countering your Falcon kick, I'll walk up like this. I might flash my shield, then run like that or i might not even use my shield at all just run immediately and if you see me start running away like that it's like oh, okay he's expecting Fal falcon kick and you can if you happen to get baited and you do it then fair play but if you see me run away like that you don't have to even uh, you don't even have to chase me right you can just walk out of the corner and just get back into neutral and fight right all of that is predicated off of you doing falcon kick successfully or unsuccessfully if you start throwing it out I have to be aware of the fact that you're willing to do it. Right. All right. Let's keep going. 